Hi, welcome to the assembly video of the 23 Sapphire Plus or XY3 printer. Take note that this assembly video only applies to the Sapphire Plus model sold by 3D Gadgets Malaysia. Before we begin, do cross-check these components for assembly with what you see on screen. Pay special attention to the labels on these bags. Without further ado, let's begin. For this section, stand by 2040 extrusion while making sure of the orientation as seen in this video. Once you are sure of the correct orientation, lay them down sideways. Also stand by a 2020 extrusion, make sure the screw holes facing the camera are wider and that the position of the holes are nearer to your right hand, while making sure the flat part is facing the bottom. You then insert the 2020 extrusion into the wider slot of the 2040 extrusion. If done correctly, everything should lay flush on the table. Now position the base as seen in this video and slide in both 2040 extrusion into the base. Once the extrusion are fully inserted into the base, secure them from the bottom with the included M510mm screw. You will find all screws in a bag label A2. Make sure that all screws are completely tightened. Now let's flip the assembly 90 degrees to make the next step easier. Prepare the other set of 2040 extrusion and 2020 extrusion and insert them into the base just as before. Make sure the orientation of the extrusions are as seen in this video. Just as before, secure the fully inserted extrusion to the base with the included M510mm screw. Once the extrusion are secured to the base, tighten all four corners with the included M516mm screw. For this next section, stand by the two Z-axis linear rails while making sure of the correct orientation as seen in this video. Insert the Z-axis linear rail into the base and secure the top of the linear rail with the included M530mm screw. Make sure the screws are completely tightened. Repeat the same process on the other side. With the top of the linear rails appear, also tighten the bottom of the linear rail to the base using the included M510mm screw. For this next section, stand the printer up and prepare for the corner bracket installation. You will find the needed component in the back label B1. Prepare the corner bracket with the washer, the screw and the T-nut. Make sure this is how they look like. Prepare four sets of them. Install the corner bracket at the bottom corner of the 2020 extrusion. Take the time to make sure that the T-nut is locking properly into the channel of the extrusion. Repeat the process for all four corners of the extrusion and make sure that the screws are tightened securely. For this section, we will need both the heat bed support platform, both the Z-axis lead screw, and the M36mm screws, they are in the back label B3. Secure the heat bed platform to the linear rail using the included M36mm screw. Repeat the same process for the other Z-axis linear rail. Insert the Z-axis lead screw through the heat bed platform into the coupler. Make sure that the lead screw is seated properly in the coupler before tightening the two set screws. Repeat the same process for the other lead screw. For 
for this next section, prepare the build surface sticker, the heat bed, and the heat bed insulator. Remove the protective film from the heat bed. You then remove the protective backing from the insulator before sticking it at the bottom of the heat bed, making sure that it is centered. Prepare these bed leveling components which can be found in the back label B7. Firstly, place the heat bed on top of the heat bed platform while making sure that the holes are aligned. Next, insert the screw from the top through the heat bed into the platform. Do the same for all four corners. With all four screws inserted, it is time to insert the bed spring into the screw in between the heat bed and the heat bed platform. Do the same for all corners, taking your time to make sure that the bed springs are inserted correctly. Once you are done with the bed springs, insert the leveling knobs in all four corners of the bed. Tighten the leveling knob about 10 turns. Do the same for all corners. Lastly, peel the protective backing from underneath the build surface sticker. Place the sticker on top of the heat bed while applying even pressure and making sure that everything is centered and aligned with no air gaps in between. For this next step, we need the Z limit switches which can be found in the back label B9. When installing the limit switches, you can manually move the bed up higher to make it easier to align the limit switch bracket with the lead screw. Raise the bed until you hit the rubber stopper on both ends. Make sure the switch is facing the rear of the printer. Also make sure that the top of the limit switch bracket is parallel to the top of the 2020 extrusion. Make sure that the T-nuts are locking correctly in the extrusion channel when tightening. Repeat the same process for the other side of the lead screw. Since this model uses an auto-level sensor, it is not necessary to install the limit switch cable. Also take this opportunity to loosen all four screws on the brass coupler. You only need to loosen them a few times. Do this for both sides. Before we move on to the next step, be sure to remove all four stopper plugs on the linear rails. Let's use the included grease to lube up the two lead screw. Be sure to use a generous amount and lube up the whole length of the two rods. For this section, we place the top gantry on top of the base while making sure that the stepper motors are facing the front of the printer. Tighten the top gantry with the included M5 10mm screw. Do the same for all four corners. Make sure all screws are tightened completely. With the top section now tightened, we now tighten the side of the gantry with the included M5 16mm screw. Do the same for all four corners. Make sure the screws are completely in. For the hot end assembly, Remove the three screws that are already secured to the bracket. Place the hot end at the bracket while making sure the cables go over the gantry and not under it. You then secure the hot end to the bracket using the three screws that were removed earlier. Next, install the X-Limit switch exactly as seen in this video. Take special note of the orientation of the trigger. With the switch installed, Push the hot end all the way to the end to make sure that the switch is actually hitting the end stop. These are the components needed for this section. You'll find them all in a back label gatis. Insert the connector into the sensor. Make sure of the correct orientation of the wires. You then secure the sensor to the mount with the provided screws. Make sure it looks exactly like this once assembled. For this section, we will be assembling the extruder. You will find all the components in the back label C2. Start by installing the spring and the spacer on the thumb screw. Tighten it a few turns on the extruder. Install the short PTFE tube at the bottom of the extruder. Install the two T-nut screw as seen in this video. Now mount the extruder on the 2040 extrusion. 
Be careful not to over tighten the T-nut screw as the bracket is only made from plastic. Insert the long PTFE tube into the top part of the extruder. For this section, we will install the filament runout sensor. All the components can be found in the back label D3. Use the shorter screws with the T-nut. Install them exactly as this video. Mount the filament runout sensor on a holder with a longer screw. They thread in directly to the mount. No T-nuts are needed. Be careful not to over tighten the longer screws as it might crush the plastic casing of the sensor. Install the whole assembly on the 2040 extrusion about 3cm away from the extruder. Install the included cable into the filament sensor. Insert the other end of the long PTFE tube into the hot end. Make sure that the PTFE tube is pushed all the way in. The filament might leak if the tube is not pushed in all the way. For this section, we will be installing the spool holder. All the components needed can be found in the back label C4. Mount the spool holder 15cm away from the base of the printer. Double check with the spool of filament to make sure that there's enough clearance. Connect the cable label E to the extruder. Connect the cable label X to the X-axis stepper motor. Connect the cable label Y to the Y-axis stepper motor. Position the Y-axis limit switch connector behind the GT2 belt before installing the Y-axis limit switch cable. Install the cable to the heat bed. Make sure that the connector is locked in properly. Now it is time to tidy up the wiring. Tuck in the wires into the channel of the extrusion. Install the extrusion cover for the Y-axis limit switch cable. Use the extrusion cover to push the connector up so that it doesn't contact the GT2 cable. Do the same for both Z-axis wiring. Tuck in excess wire into the base. Tidy up the rest of the wiring by tucking them into the extrusion channel. Secure the hot end wiring to the hot end bracket via the provided slot with cable tie. Do the same for the wiring into the base. Make sure there's enough slack for the hot end to move the whole pin area. Plug in the power cable and turn on the printer. You have now successfully assembled a 2-3 supplier fast core XY 3D printer. At the tools menu, click home and all. For this step, we will level the bed so that the auto level sensor can perform its job optimally. This ensures that the bed is balanced in all four corners for accurate reading. Once the printer finishes homing, click other and the first icon. Slide a piece of A4 paper underneath the nozzle to level the bed. Turn the leveling knob right if there's too much drag on the paper. Turn the leveling knob left if there is no friction at all. Do the same for all four corners. Repeat this process a few times until all four corners have the same amount of drag. Click the auto level sensor next and let the sensor does its job. Once the sensor has completed its sequence, go into the printing menu and load the file for calibration line. The printer will then print a series of lines that you will use as a guide to adjust the ideal Z height offset. The goal here is to achieve the ideal first layer as seen here. If the lines are too thick, it means the nozzle is too close to the bed. If the lines are barely sticking to the bed, that means the nozzle is too far away. Make the necessary adjustment in the baby step menu while printing at increment of 0.01mm. Z- brings the nozzle closer to the bed while Z- brings it further away. Make note that this sequence has to be repeated each time you auto-level the bed. With the final step done, congratulations, you can start printing now.